from looking along this riverbed. Snake, the most venomous. Whoa, he just opened his mouth. My name's Jack Randall and I'm a zoologist. Wow. And I'm showing you every animal on the planet. They're not seeing me as a threat. Spinning cobra. Hello. Absolutely gorgeous. Going about their business. Yes. Come on, let's go. On today's recce, I'm going to head down to one of the dry riverbeds in the area. Oh, do you hear that? Thunder. Whoa. That's it. That's good. That's good for me. That thunder actually can spur on a lot of animals to get on the move. Let's just walk through these thick grasses to see what's around. Wow! Okay, this is actually an unbelievable, incredible species. This is the Kalahari tent tortoise. It's one of two species that lives in this environment, but this one is incredibly rare. I'm going to move you out a little bit because this could be the last time we actually see another one of this species around. The reason why there's very few of these tortoises, they're very picky eaters. They only eat particular grasses and succulent vegetation. And if that isn't around, they don't survive. The Kalahari tent has got a specific niche in this environment, and that's why there's less of them compared to their cousins, the leopard tortoises. So we're really quite lucky to find this one today. Can't believe it, let him go on his way. Happy hunting, well, not really hunting, happy foraging. time of the morning it's also a really good time to keep an eye out on the tracks as you never know the luck may double up. Oh wow torches come 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 Kalahari tent tortoise unbelievable that's two in one morning obviously the thunderstorms are making them move but look here another one crossing the road so one out of a hundred tortoises there's a Kalahari tent we found two in one morning Okay, well, at omen for the rest of the day, maybe we'll find some elusive species. I'm gonna put you to the other side of the road. Oh, look, the boons. A whole troop of baboons down there. And it's even a baby. So cool to see baboons just living their daily lives. I'm gonna head down to that dry riverbed now, see if we can get close to them. But also, this is a great habitat to start searching for other animals that are in the area. I'm looking along this riverbank to see if I can see any activity, any movement. And the key animals that I'm looking for, reptiles, snakes, and this is the time for them. Look at that. Casualty. Guess what that is? You can see the tusk coming out here. That's a warthog. Quite a big warthog too. You can still see the bristles along there. Yeah. May have been eaten by leopards. Leopards love eating warthogs. Also, we've got a an old kudu horn. Blimey! I tell you what. If you look along this dry riverbed, there's just skulls everywhere. Look, there's another one here. Wow. That there is a antelope. You can see why and how I know that. It's just because of a dentition. So that's a grinding tooth, a molar. They use that to grind up the grasses. Yeah, this spot here. See, this is actually really good little habitat. So there's almost definitely something living in here because you've got rotting vegetation, which then means you've got the detritivores, those little invertebrates that feed on this rotting vegetation, which then means you've got animals that eat those detritivores. So you've got little mini ecosystems within these habitats. And so I might actually have a look around here, see what is around in this rotten tree trunk. Oh, wow! Woo! 
steak. Yes, look at that, absolutely tiny. This here is a burrowing snake. Not just any burrowing snake, it's a shovel-snouted snake. I mean, it looks kind of like a worm, but no, that's a snake. And it's an extremely rare and specialised snake. It's got an upturned snout in order to burrow through the sand in order to find its specialised prey item. And that is lizard eggs, only lizard eggs. It's all he eats in some ways. It's very similar to that snake that we found in Asia, which was specialised in eating worms. So many people think that snakes, they're only big and they eat mammals, rats, but actually there's just so many different types of snakes and they eat all different types of prey items. But what's quite incredible is that um, because there's so many different mini ecosystems, they're all cut off, that shovel-snouted snakes, there's very little research being done into their different species. And so where I am right now, I imagine that not many of these have been found and been studied or even the DNA has been collected. So this one here could even be a new subspecies or even a new species itself of shovel-snouted snake. What a little prize. Let's keep looking down this dry riverbed, see what else we can find. little cute one, leopard tortoise. He's just been crossing this riverbank, probably finding this is really succulent vegetation where there's more moisture down here than anywhere else. And he's just munching away at these, at these this grass. And this is pretty much the only way they get their water. They don't really drink much. So they get all of their water from their vegetation. I might just lift him out of the ground here so you can get a good shot of him. Yeah, there you go, leopard tortoise. Telling the difference between this leopard tortoise and the Kalahari tent tortoises that we saw earlier in the day, it's fairly easy. Firstly, look at the shell. The leopard tortoise has dark spottings and rectangular markings, a bit like its name suggests, the leopard. The Kalahari tent has unmistakable star-shaped patterning. Also, the edge of the shell, it has jagged serrations. Really amazing how ancient looking these animals look. And this is a really quite a small one. They get to quite large, up to 20 kilograms. He's getting a bit of a move on. He wants to get up to the vegetation. Africa is home to more land tortoises than any other continent on the planet. So this is the place where we'll see, I'm sure, more of these guys. And this is a little baby. Leopard tortoise. Yes. Snake! Okay! Woo! Wow! Small snake! This is a cobra. Wow! Yes! This is a baby Anchites or Angolan cobra. And this, as they get older, is one of the biggest cobras out here. They can get up to two meters in length. And not only that, it's one of the most venomous snakes out here. Incredibly venomous. Neurotoxic venom. If I got bitten by this snake, I'd quite quickly have a respiratory failure. It just shuts down your system. Looks like he might have been attacked because his back vertebrae there looks a little bit damaged. And he's trying to get to the other side of the vegetation. I'm gonna move you over this way so we can have a good look at you. Okay, do not be fooled by the size of this snake, I'm telling you now. Baby snakes have exactly the same venom as their adults do. Their venom yield will be a little bit less, but it's exactly the same. But the thing is, the cobra, with the venom strength that they've got, you only need the tiniest little droplet in order to cause problems. Ankita's cobra. What an unbelievable evening this has been. We found that shovel-snouted snake, very small one. And then the leopard tortoise, is also quite small. And now this baby, Anchites cobra. And the reason why we're finding small animals right now is because recently there's been a pretty good rainy season. And so these animals have been breeding very successfully. And this may even be a new hatchling, may have been born even this year. And so this is quite a vulnerable time for a cobra. 
They really need to be eating quickly in order to grow strong. Otherwise, he's going to be eaten by an eagle or a jackal. So right now, this cobra has got a black band around its what would be a hood if he was hooding out. And they actually lose that black banding as they grow. That speckled coloration, that golden coloration, that starts to darken in general. Many different snakes actually change their form as they get to adulthood. And the Ankiti, the Angolan cobra, is no different. But I think that's the key thing to realize is that, that baby snakes, if they are venomous, they are just as venomous as the adults. And you've got to be very wary, especially with a cobra like this. But there's another interesting thing about baby snakes, and including the snake we just found, the shovel snouted snake, is that lots of predators, they won't, won't be able to eat the adults. So, and when there's a baby born, there's a lot. I would say the clutch size of the Angolan cobra, maybe 30 different little babies that are born. And so many of them will never reach adulthood. But that's not so bad in the, in the, in the context of the ecosystem, the environment that you need these babies in order to be food for other animals. So it's an unfortunate way of life, but you know, the chances of this one surviving to the point where he will be of reproductive age is quite slim, but that's just nature. So I, I, I don't know, I feel, you know, it's, a, it's, it's something which, you know, you want to show off the most biggest animals, but it's sometimes the small animals that are very important and the babies are an important part of any ecosystem. There you go, what an amazing end to the evening. A baby and golden cobra, yes. Happy hunting, mate.